Welcome back to another edition of the Net Report Podcast. I'm your host, Mike Broadbent. Joining me once again is my co-host, Richie Schneiderite. Uh, Richie, we're going to go over the next five years of Rutgers' Big Ten conference schedule that was announced yesterday. Big break for Rutgers, considering what we were looking at in the near future to what we ended up with. Uh, we have some uh, football recruiting news and some recruit stats that we think are notable from the last few weeks on the gridiron. Yes. Let's just go right off the top, though. We got our conference schedule for the near future uh, from 2024 to 2028. Big Ten announced that uh, all at once yesterday uh, because they previously announced the schedule in June for at least the next two years, I want to say. Uh, yes, 2024 and 2025. Yep. And so when they announced that, um, you know, a couple months later, or maybe a month later, the conference added Oregon and Washington starting in 24. So mm -hmm. they had to obviously totally blow up the schedule and, and redo it. Um, I also think it's notable that they announced the next five years of the schedule, uh, despite the rumors swirling about ACC schools. Um, Stupid. But I guess we'll, we'll table <laughs> that for now. Uh, let's talk about what Rutgers' schedule looks like in 24. Um, so Holy shit. We, ha so we have... We have two out of conference games on the books for right now. That's yeah. a home game versus Akron and an away game as a return trip to Blacksburg, uh, Virginia tech. So those are the non-conference schedules. You can expect an FCS school to get added. Who knows? It'll probably be a Wagner type. Uh, so Rutgers gets two home games there at a conference, the home games previously, I'll go with previously first. Okay. This is what, this is what the conference schedule Rutgers was looking at home, Illinois, home Iowa, mm -hmm. home Michigan, home Penn State, home UCLA, Ouch. away Maryland, away Michigan State, away Minnesota, away Ohio State. So the, the reason the schedule is so brutal is because you, you know, you get, a, you get rid of the divisions after this year, but the Big Ten was Not like, really. actually, <laughs> you're still going to play the Big Ten East, but we'll do you a favor and remove Indiana. Uh, sarcasm, not a, not a favor. Mm -hmm. They're the worst team in the Big Ten East. And we're yep. going to replace, replace them with UCLA, and then you're going to get Minnesota, you're going to get Iowa, and you're going to get Illinois. The shocker yesterday was that it seems like they, you know, shined some light upon Rutgers and actually gave them the first break since they've joined the Big Ten in general. So the new schedule is going to be home uh, Illinois, home Minnesota, home UCLA, Home Washington, home Wisconsin, away Maryland, away Michigan State, away Nebraska, and away USC. So essentially, the Big Ten has swapped Michigan, Penn State, Ohio State, and Iowa for Washington, Wisconsin, Nebraska, and USC for Rutgers. That's a huge win. Huge, also about a huge dub. win. <laughs> this is also a schedule where a lot of those top teams that Rutgers is going to be playing next year is either are either going to be rebuilding or have like a coaching change situation within the last two years. So USC is mm -hmm. going to lose a ton of talent this offseason. Of course. Like, like number one pick of the draft, Caleb Williams is gone. Mm -hmm. Nebraska is going to be in year two of Matt Rule, which has not gone well so far. I expect Matt Rule to, you know, turn it around because he's a good coach, but yeah, you know, they're they're still in the beginning phases of a rebuild. You got Michigan State, abject disaster. Um, they're going to be having a coaching change. They'll probably get a, a fairly big name because they have a lot of money to throw around. Maryland is losing Talia Tagovailoa mm -hmm. uh, because you know his seventh year of eligibility is now up. I don't know how long he's been in college, but it's been a while. Yep. Uh, Wisconsin will be in year two of Luke Fickle and the air raid and a three three five, and mm -hmm. you know they'll probably be good, but it's still fairly new into that rebuild or no, I wouldn't say it's a rebuild, but new regime. Mordecai has got to be gone too, right? At that he's point. He's going to be gone. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Washington is losing Michael Penix Jr. Who's one of the top Huge. quarterbacks in the country. UCLA, uh, they have a good young quarterback in Dante Moore and Chip Kelly is mm -hmm. a good coach. So they'll, they'll be a tough game. Uh, Minnesota, who knows what's going to happen with them Yikes. because you know, they've, they not, not, not that there's been turmoil, but I think there's starting to be some cracks in the foundation of PJ Flex program there. Mm -hmm. um, and then you get Illinois, who's really struggling this year. Um, and Brett Bielema is a good coach, but you kind of expected more from them given their trajectory early in his tenure. On so, 
<laughs> I don't think there's got a more favorable schedule in the Big Ten next year than than Rutgers has. Um, now I, I just did a lot of talking, Rich. So no, is there is there anything? <laughs> that's perfect. There... No, I I agree with you though. I think you're spot on. Sorry to cut you off. Um, but yeah, no, I, I think you're 100 spot on. This schedule is very very favorable for Rutgers. Um, another thing I want to point out is I know everyone's thinking like, all right, we don't have game times yet. We don't have kickoff times, but they did come out. The Big Ten CEO COO Kerry Kenny did come out and he said we will not have any 9 a.m. local games on the West Coast. So that USC game right there will not be at 9 a.m. Eastern time. So that's well, just will be noon Eastern time. Noon Eastern time. Sorry. Yes. Yep. Um, so that's good. That's a good sign. So I mean, number one, because I think a lot of fans are actually going to travel that one. We saw our yep. board actually blow up and have like I want to say ten to fifteen people like say like, hey, I can't wait. I'm driving distance. I'm like, damn, we have that many California people on our boards. I guess but, so. Yeah. Uh, yeah, there's a, there's a big fan base for Rutgers out there, uh, bigger than you would expect. I shouldn't say big, but I think the fact that uh, you get a chance to play out in the the Coliseum is pretty cool. So I, I do think uh, there's going to be a lot of people there. I'm a little, I, I don't actually. I'm going to wait till we table this till we get to the later ones. But other than that, all the matchups you just said are are huge. You might have Illinois, who's in pretty bad program. Minnesota, PJ Fleck, future Rutgers wide receivers coach, is a. Uh, in turmoil over there mm-hmm. um conspiracy theory hear me out kirk Sharaka might get a new job somewhere else maybe go maybe get a head coaching job at a lower level dave brock moves up wide receiver spot opens pj fleck you're probably gonna get fired soon because you lost to northwestern and here we go um you, it's hey crazier things have happened we need the tinfoil hat back i'm gonna say it yeah i'll, I'll get it i'll get the, the tinfoil up up in my new office here soon yeah, we need a sponsor from Reynolds too. Reynolds yeah, Rap. Reynolds so Rap. Yeah. Whenever you're bored and you need a sponsor, of Reynolds, we got you. But uh, <laughs> UCLA, like you said, interesting. Um, Chip Kelly, pff, the rumors about Michigan State now. So who knows what happens there? Um, I'm not going to go through it all. You already did. But uh, yeah, I do. I think this is. I'm looking at a bowl game in 2024, at least. If not, I'm trying to think. Akron and who was the other one? Uh, at Virginia Tech. That's a toughie. I don't think Virginia Tech's yep. good, but that atmosphere is crazy. I'm very excited well, for that, by the way. I mean, if you look at what Virginia Tech has done since they played Rutgers, obviously they broke out a new quarterback against us, and True. he had his he had his struggles, but he also had his flashes. I thought he looked actually pretty good for his first mm-hmm. start as a college player. Uh, he's had a really good stretch of games since he played Rutgers. I think last week. He was the number one uh, rated QB on PFF in terms of a grade. Wow. Um, Damn, five touchdowns by himself? Mm-hmm. Yeah, so last week, this kid, they beat uh, Pittsburgh 38-21. to 21. Uh, Obviously, Pittsburgh is having a, a rough season too, but yeah. Kyron Jones had, he was 12 for 19, 228 yards, three touchdowns in the air, and then uh, 41 yards on the ground and two touchdowns. Um, kids would do so, yeah um, so yeah I mean that's a tough one but um, Akron <clears throat> should be a win although they did bring Indiana to overtime and they brought Buffalo to overtime so who who knows Joe Moorhead's a great yep. coach um, there's no yep. question about that but uh, yeah no I think bowl game easily in 2024 maybe 7 8 win maybe more like I, I'm not gonna jump ahead of myself but year 3 of Gavin Running backs are back. Monongai's back. Sam Brown's back. Everyone's pretty much back, but the wide receivers, you lose a couple, but Ian Strong, someone else steps up. Who knows? I don't want to count my chickens, but they are. Uh, well, here, look, look here's, another, here's another big thing to take into account. So Rutgers has struggled in the transfer portal for two primary reasons. Yes. One is because previously they didn't have the best NIL situation. That has gotten True. a lot better. We're still not in the realm of Texas A&M or USC or yeah. schools like that, but we are we're not we're not at the bottom of the barrel anymore. We're squarely in the middle of the pack, which is good because you need to at least compete. Kids aren't always going to take the biggest offer. Some kids will. That's mm-hmm. going to be the primary driver. But it's the same way as high school recruiting used to be. Like, there's certain things that are more important to kids than others. Some really want to be close to home. Some want to have a clear path on the depth chart. Some want to go to school where their girlfriend goes. It's a lot of different factors that go into it. So kids who want the most money in NIL through the transfer portal, Rutgers probably isn't going to land. And that's just a group of kids that you're never going to land. So 
whatever. But Rutgers can compete now. Second, you can sell a winning program in transfer portal recruiting now. Like yes. we've talked about before, it's really easy. Or it's a lot easier to sell a vision to a high school recruit who might be at your school for four or five years than it is to a graduate transfer fifth year senior who wants to have that bowl game experience, that wants to compete, that wants to set himself up to go to the NFL. Uh, Rutgers is going to be able to sell that now because clearly things have taken a turn this year for the better. I think this is a clear bowl team this year and probably a bowl team next year too. So yeah. you're going to have a lot more to sell in the portal. And that gets me to, you talked about how, you know, we're losing a lot of receivers. I think guys like Ian Strong, Jesse O'Fury, uh, a couple other younger guys are really kind of positioning themselves nicely for next year when that depth chart clears out. But you'll also be able to sell to a transfer portal wide receiver or two. Hey, come here. We got a stud young quarterback. We got, you know. You know, we produced at this level um, mm -hmm. in the NCAA last year. We put this guy in the NFL. Like, I think Jaquay Jackson's a guy who go to the NFL next year. Yeah. Um, so there's a lot more to sell in the portal, and that's going to be huge for a lot of reasons, but one being the transfer mm -hmm. portal recruiting. Well, that's a big reason they got Jaquay in the first place. They said, yep. hey, we don't have wide receiver one at all. Like, you come in, you could be that guy. Now, has it worked out so far that way? Not really, but he is kind of that wide receiver one role still. It's just... They're not getting he's, him the ball as much. I mean, he's starting to get more and more comfortable each week. You could see it. Yeah. So I think you sell that again. You kind of just say, hey, we just had six wins. Hey, did you see what we did? We were competitive against Michigan. We were competitive against Penn State, competitive against Ohio State, et cetera. So that's why those other games, it's so important not to get blown out. You just have to be competitive. Maybe if you, even if it's late game blowouts, garbage time, don't give a shit about that. But as yeah. long as you're close in some of these games against the bigger boys of the Big Ten, then – that's it. That's the selling point. And then you get a little money on the side, of course. But um, yeah, I think it's it's wide open. I think this transfer portal season is going to be very, very interesting because I think there's going to be a lot of names out there, especially from like a lot of schools are going to fire coaches sooner or later. And you, you see it already at Michigan State. People are speculating who's going to enter Northwestern. I know no one's really entered after that whole thing, but I do expect a bunch to enter after the season. So it's it's going to be something to watch, and this transfer portal season could be arguably Rutgers' best so far. Yeah, I think it could be too. Um, I think we're also going to need to potentially dip in for some some offensive linemen, and yes, you know, you could That's say, it. but 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 Mike, they're you know they've have gotten a lot better. Um, you know, I was shocked to see this. This is a crazy stat. Guess which FBS program has allowed the fewest sacks this season. Rutgers, I guess, right? It's Rutgers. Rutgers yeah. has allowed the fewest sacks out of 130 some FBS college football programs. So you say, well, you know, we're we're running the ball better. You look at all those big games from a nun guy. We're doing this against teams that aren't top of class in the Big Ten. Big Ten, if you look at Big Ten teams that are ranked, look at their offensive line, look at their defensive line, if mm -hmm. in terms of their their height, their size, and their relative speeds and there's yeah. a reason why there's, you know, Ohio State has six seven deep at defensive line at six four to six six two seventy plus. Same thing on the offensive line. You need those crazy. You need those big bodies that are able to move fast and have the length uh, to kind of block and get off blocks the way that you need to. So Rutgers is doing really well with what they've got right now. I think Gus Salinskis has been a big surprise this year. If you look at his PFF grades, they've turned out to be really good. Holland Pierce has been good, um, but I, I don't I don't think that every offensive line position will be set in stone going into the offseason. I'll say that. 100% agree. Um, I, I know, like you said, Zelenskis has been very good, and center's a spot where you can get away with a little bit of a smaller guy. Yep. Um, Brian Felter's been good, but like they're not Big Ten linemen. Like You look at the left side of the line and the right side, and there, there's a significant difference. Like The left side has Dunlap yep. and Pierce, and those are Big Ten size linemen. Mind you, Dunlap's been, eh, and he's he's been injured too, so I, I don't really fault him for that. But the right side, Tyler Needham had some decent size, but in reality, he's probably a guard on most of those Big Ten West teams that have those massive dudes up front. Um, and then it just they need some help there. Like I, I get it. Like some of these guys have been really good, and like you said, the sack numbers are down, and that's a, that's a product of Wimsett getting the ball out pretty quickly too. Um, I know he's not like EJ Warner quick, but he still gets it out pretty quick. Um, mm -hmm. 
But overall, yeah, I mean, the running backs are helping that out too. They're, you're seeing extra blockers out there, whether it be a two tight end set or just um, just a tight end blocking in general. Um, Kyle Nanga is one of probably one of the best pass pro blockers in college football, I would assume, in terms of snaps and all that, and playing majority of snaps and blocking. But I have to look into that one actually. Um, but yeah, no, you still need linemen. And that's going to be the tough part because I've said it before in this offseason, they've reached out to linemen. They've reached out to like G5 guys that were going to move up or power five guys that didn't even play at their schools. And they're getting like 200, 300K. And it's like, holy shit. Like, mm-hmm. I'd, I'd go somewhere too and get 200, 300K to sit the bench somewhere. But um, yeah, so it's it's going to be tough still. But I do think it's a lot easier of a sell just like wide receiver. Yeah, definitely. Um, so overall, schedule is a home run for Rutgers next year. I know that they've released the next five years of the schedule. Mm-hmm. Um, Rutgers has one protected rival in Maryland. So Ooh. Rutgers will play them every single year. Um, I know that there's been some talk about, uh, this has been talk amongst the fan bases and on different podcasts about a potential rivalry trophy. Um, I think that'd be great. You kind of have to nail it though. You can't just come up with something cheesy because it'll just get, you know, piled on. So, um, I hope that they introduce one. There's a lot of different things that you could kind of name it after, but Rutgers needs, if you're going to have a protective rival in the big 10, you should have a, a rivalry trophy or have the name of a game or something that really, cause I don't think Maryland fans really dislike Rutgers. I don't think Rutgers fans really dislike Maryland. So it's just kind of like your rivals by default because you came into the league at the same time. You're kind of geographically the closest two schools to one another. Um, but I think a trophy could kind of start to ignite a bit of a rivalry, but we'll see, I guess. Here, here's my pitch. I'm just going to pop it up. That's it. That's the pitch. Is it popping up? It's not popping up yet. That, that's it. That should be the trophy. A blue claw oh crab. It makes too much sense. They have a bunch. You could put a little old bay thing on one side. You could put a little, uh, I don't even know what you put on the other side, but I think that would be absolutely perfect. It makes too much sense. Maryland loves their uh their seafood new jersey loves their seafood and it's a staple of both uh food industries between the two states or you just make delaware and just be like like everyone's typical thing just make a delaware trophy which would be funny and kind of play on the whole big 10 has the weirdest trophies of all time thing because i was looking Mm -hmm. through it today and what the hell is going on there (laughs) yeah there's some weird ones for sure um but they just gotta introduce one just do it who cares what it is at this point yeah it'd be a lot of fun um is there anything else schedule wise you wanted to hit on before we move on? Yeah, I know they did it five years in advance. That's not going to last. Maybe the next two might work. Yeah, but the, like you said, the ACC season, the what is it, the Magnificent Seven or some shit? Uh, something like that. Yeah, something weird like that. The ACC is going to fall apart soon, and then it's going to be a Power Three, maybe Power Four. If uh, I don't even know if that. Yeah, Power 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 Four. Unless the ACC grabs some scraps from somewhere else, but um, yeah, I there's a very, very unlikely chance that 27 and 28, maybe even 26 ever happen the way it's scheduled currently. But I, you got to love the matchups and I'm I'm a little disappointed. They're not going to Oregon until 2028. Yeah. Is that what it is? Yeah. Uh, yeah, I think so. I I wanted to see Eugene. I want to see the, the whole like setup they have and all the Nike, this Nike, that Phil Knight, this, I thought that'd be cool, but who knows? Maybe when they switch it up again, uh, we might get a chance to see it. So earlier. Yeah. There's a, a lot of, uh, good trips out west to make mm-hmm. um both with la schools washington's got one of the most gorgeous setups for uh tailgating that i've ever seen i haven't been there mm-hmm. but just uh they had they were like right on a lake so you can literally That's there's cool. a few schools that are like this where you can uh there's not i think it's the bay you can like literally take a boat up to the stadium and tailgate huh. like you could do that at tennessee as well um so just something to kind of look forward to if you got <laughs> if you happen to have a a friend with a boat in Seattle. Um, start Let us playing know. that tailgate. Yeah. <laughs> um, USC though, that's next year, right? That's the crazy one next year, at least. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Or the, the, I should say the new one. Um, I've been there. It's nice. It's not nothing crazy. I don't know how the tailgating atmosphere is, but uh, I've I've went there last or just January actually, just to check it out, and it's it's cool. It's a cool little area. Um, nowhere near LA though. Kind of a little little drive there. But whatever. It's USC Coliseum. Yeah. Yep, that's no, a an iconic stadium for uh, college football in general. Yeah, uh, definitely worth seeing if you've never been. Um, so next, let's uh, let's discuss some football recruiting. Uh, we we teased this at the beginning. Uh, 
one big news item that kind of popped up is one of Rutgers' top recruits, Benjamin Black. He's the receiver from North Carolina. <clears throat> uh, he's a guy who's gotten a lot of hype this uh, this season. He's just yes. kind of displayed his world-class speed um, and just been one of the top risers in the Southeast. Mm -hmm. um, he is taking an official visit to North Carolina uh, this weekend? I'm not or just sure. A... I think it's just a regular visit, it sounds like. Okay. So he's taking a visit to North Carolina this weekend for their game against Marshall. Um, it's expected. He, he doesn't have an offer right now, but it's expected he'll pick one up. Yep. Uh, scale of 1 to 10, how concerned should Rutgers fans be about potentially losing Benjamin Black? I'd be pretty – I shouldn't say pretty concerned. I'd be slightly concerned at the moment because he he is – um. He doesn't have any Power 5 Carolina offers, and this is going to be his first one. So maybe it might not be this one, but we know South Carolina has been sniffing around too. Um, they've given him a like a really long look, and they're still talking to him. So that's one I would be – if South Carolina was like, hey, come on a visit, I'd be really worried. NC State, I'm not as worried, but I'm still kind of worried because it is the close-to-home feel. It's the whole Carolina thing, and he's been playing so well. I know he's still a 5.5 in our database, number 38 in the state of North Carolina. But if you've read the things like Adam Friedman, our national analyst, has seen him like two times, three times, he's just been hyping this kid up nonstop. Like I was, I, I've said it on our pods before, I think, or maybe in a war room, I forget what it was, that Rutgers is going to have another four star commitment in this, in this class and it won't be a new commitment. And people speculate it was AJ Serace. People speculate it maybe Winowich, but it's probably this kid, if I had to guess right now, because he's that, he's that crazy good. Like, and he's super explosive. I know he's listed 5'11". I think he's more like six foot now. He runs a 10'7", 100-meter dash. That's like wow, insane. Um, but they've done a good job of holding off programs so far. I know I think Rutgers is supposed to reach out to him soon. Um, probably just be like, hey, don't go. But like, if you want to go, we understand. Um, it's a visit. You haven't made many, many visits. So the biggest worry, too, is that he hasn't been on campus since summer. So that's a little bit of a concern as well. Um not getting him for to come up to Jersey for a game is a little tough, uh, but we'll see what happens. I mean, he's definitely going to get the offer as soon as he probably gets there, to be honest with you. Um, but he's a kid that's probably a four star in this class when it's all said and done. So it's it'd be a, it'd be a kick in the kick in the nuts. No way, no way around it, really. Yeah, that's the kind of speed you need in the Big Ten, especially with all these Pac-12 yeah. schools coming in. Um, you need a guy like Benjamin Black. So here's hoping the staff can keep him around. Uh, because that was a great pull out of North Carolina for a kid who was pretty under recruited, clearly. Uh, so you just gotta hope he the the draw of playing close to home and playing on uh, defense potentially isn't that strong because uh, he'd be a kid that would be a, one of the biggest blows to lose in the class in general. And you don't you might not think that based on just you know the star rankings like you said, but he's mm -hmm. sometimes you just have those three stars that you just know are going to be a lot better players than their rating is. Like yeah. you know, a few of those guys each year. And he just feels like one of those guys. Well, like like I said, he's going to get an upgrade soon. I don't know if he'll get four star in this update or maybe in the next update. But I said on our last pod or one of our pods, I don't remember anymore because we do a million. Um, <laughs> but uh, that don't pay attention to the early rankings. Don't pay attention to the middle rankings. Don't pay attention to this ranking. Pay attention to the final ranking. That's the one that matters. It's the only one that counts. And I think that final ranking will have him a four star in the state of North Carolina when it's all said and done. Um, that being said, I know some people have asked us on the boards and I've answered on the boards too, but, uh, this one, usually Greg Shiano and crew don't want their commits visiting elsewhere. Usually they'll be like, Hey, like, that's it. See you later. And like you visited elsewhere. It's like having a girlfriend and be like, nah, I still want to go on dates though. Mm -hmm. But, uh, and I, I'm okay with the staff's philosophy on that. I think that's a, it's a good way to recruit like at the end of the day, but this one doesn't seem like that's the case. He's probably going to take that visit, and then we'll kind of see where things stand probably Sunday, Monday maybe even, and then we'll probably get an update around then. Awesome. So he was hoping that the visit doesn't go very well, uh, but yeah. they rarely <laughs> go poorly. Um, hey, Marshall's on the feet. They might pull it off. Marshall, I think, actually has a very is a very live dog in that one. Um, they've been really impressive so far, and they have one of the best running backs in the country. Um, True. Is there anything else recruiting wise you want to hit on before you move on? Um, a new offer, twenty twenty six DE Jermaine Kinsler. His cousin is Jordan Kinsler on the team. Spoke with us today. Well, yesterday technically, the article came out today. Some some good stuff on there. So definitely check that out. 
Uh, went through the commitment stats again. This, as we do every week, uh, AJ Serace and Winowich continue to dominate Western New Jersey because, well, number one, they're good. Number two, Western New Jersey is just not good. Uh, um, 11 rushes for 122 yards and three scores for Winowich. I, I had him as player of the week, but then I'm looking back now and I'm like, probably should have gave it to Isaiah Crumpler, who's just been a monster on both sides. Three rushes, 17 yards, 10 receptions, 100 yards of touchdown. Uh, 10 total tackles, nine of them were solo, one tackle for loss, and one kick return for 53 yards. So I fucked up. I should have made him player of the week. <laughs> uh, but, yeah, no. Uh, all the guys have been doing really well so far. Um, there's a couple that are still out with injuries. Matthew Agunny hasn't played a single game this season due to, uh, I believe it's a knee in- a hamstring injury. And then Montel Johnson hasn't uh, racked up any stats yet this season either. He's uh, dealing with a knee injury, so. They're guys, those are two guys that are pretty highly ranked. I'm not really concerned. Let them get healthy. Don't, actually, you know what? Don't let anyone else see them. Put it like that. Yeah, um, yeah. Just get on the campus, especially Montel Johnson, who's going to be a beast. Uh, other than that, uh, Sam Piloff has hit double-digit tackles in one, two, three, four, four out of his seven games so far. Uh, I don't know how good Wisconsin football is, but the man's – Kick returning, punt returning, tackling people, sacks, tackles for loss. Like, he's done it all. Kosh Sanders continues to be a stud. Ten rushes for 125 yards and touchdown. First to Paul Catholic, who we all know is pretty good. Um, Other than that, uh, Antonio White got a couple new offers recently. I know he got that Kansas State one, but it doesn't seem like it's that big of a deal to him, which is nice. So let's keep it that way and just keep uh, keep things uh, rolling. That's all I got. Yeah, so not a ton going on. Um, we dedicated some some time specifically to basketball this past couple weeks. Um, so we don't really have a whole lot recruiting wise to talk about there. Um, True. But uh, there are a couple other things basketball wise that we want to hit back on. If you haven't already, uh, want to, and you want to go to Night Fest, which is the Midnight Madness event yes. for uh, Rutgers basketball. That is going to be on October 13th. If you want to buy tickets, we have several different ticket packages available on nightsociety.io. Uh, I think it's going to be a big time event. Um, there's going to be a lot of visitors that weekend. I'm not saying they're going to be there or not, but I would imagine they would be. Um, this is me just speculating. So it'd be a great, we, you want to have a great environment for those recruits because it's going to be mm-hmm. the majority of the class uh, for 24. And, uh, another top guy in 25 and Trey McKinney. So if you plan yeah. on going or you're on the fence, it would be, if you ain't got nothing else to do that weekend, or that <laughs> night, definitely recommend doing it. Yeah. It sounds like it's gonna be a great time. And I think this, this could be, you know, a, an event they kind of blow out even bigger in years to come. Um, Cause it's gonna be at the barn on college Ave. And I mean, given the, you know, how good the crowds have been and how good ticket sales have been for the basketball program. I don't see why this can't be an event they hold at the rack uh, in the future too. So Agreed. I thought that was an interesting one that it's at the barn and not the rack, but I, I guess make it smaller atmosphere, make it more condensed, more uh, meaningful, I guess. And uh, I know they've done Midnight Madness at the rack before and it's kind of sporadic and people are everywhere and they're up top, they're down low. It's not all condensed yep. in one. I would just say shut down the top sections, just put it down in the bottom and Simple as that. Yeah, and also, I mean, the last time there was Midnight Madness at the Rack was 2017. So this yeah. was after Pike's long. first year. Uh, so you would think, and this is also me speculating, that <laughs> there might just be a ton more people um, because <laughs> there wasn't really a whole lot to get excited about after Pike's first year. I mean, you could, if you watched Rutgers basketball under Eddie Jordan versus Steve Pike, or even in year geez. one, you could tell that, you know, there was a clear change in, you know, effort level at the very least. Uh, the talent still wasn't there outside of like a guy like Corey Sanders, but they, you know, clearly were trying harder. So uh, I, I would expect it, especially in 24, you know, you have that superstar class coming in. You have a lot of returning guys. Maybe you land a top kid or two in the portal. That would be one hell of an event at the rack. Yeah, next year could be nutty. <laughs> um, yep. No way else to put it, really, I guess. Uh, there was one other thing we wanted to plug. Um, yes. You guys probably know what the Riot Squad is. It's the student 
uh, fan organization that are always in the front row of the student section. They're always the ones trying to get people the most riled up. Uh, they're the biggest super fans on campus, essentially. They are raising money for a trip out to Bloomington, Indiana for the Rutgers Indiana game. Um, you know more about this than I do, so why don't you take it from here? Yeah, so I believe they actually are leaving today. I don't know what time today. No, 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 they're not leaving today. No. Oh, this is – oh, I'm sorry. This is for Indiana. I, I'm, yes. I'm so lost. I thought they were going to Wisconsin. Um, anyway, they're going to Indiana. Um, yeah, so they're uh, – basically they're arranging flights for eight people, for eight students to go to Bloomington. They're trying to cover the airfare there. Uh, additionally, our uh, resident TKR staff writer slash uh, ride squad member um, – I don't know what his role is at ride squad, but he's up there. Um, Alec um, – I don't know how to pronounce his last name. I'm not going to butcher it for him, but um, they call him Crouton. So we're, we're going to throw that one out there. <laughs> um, we'll be providing transportation on the road via his mom's minivan. I don't know if it's actually Let's a minivan go. or not. So shout out to Alex. So basically what they're looking for is just a couple expenses for gas. Um, seven students are going to be going by car. Eight students are going by uh, flight. So their total is what they're looking for between gas, flight, and Airbnb is just looking for like $2,400. I know it sounds like a lot, um, but I know they've had a lot of donations so far via our message board. So um, if you are interested in donating, um, you can. they have a Venmo account set up by the president of uh, the Riot Squad, Frank Sarcino. Sar Sar uh, I'm sorry, Frank, if I mispronounced that wrong. But it's uh, at Frank, F-R-A-N-K dash S-A-R-R-A-C-I-N-O. So that's their Venmo. Um, every donation is going to help these guys out. Um, buy them some beer money too. Come on, help these guys out. Uh, <laughs> but in reality, uh, you can also contact them at fes29 at scarletmail.ruckers.edu. Or, I mean, you can give them a phone call if you really want. He put that in there and it's public. So don't yell at me for putting it out there. Uh, 201-551-1534. Um, I know they're only a couple hundred dollars away from hitting that 2,400 mark. Um, I've thrown money at them. Uh, I know a bunch of our members have already thrown money their way, helped them out. Um, uh, shout out to Alex's mom for letting him get that minivan for the weekend. Uh, <laughs> but, uh, yeah, I mean, uh, definitely help these students get to, uh, Bloomington and help them, uh, cheer on the, your fellow Scarlet Knights. Yeah. And hypothetically, this is, uh, Bowl game? After the game after, yeah, this is the game after, um, after the Michigan game. State game. <laughs> so this potentially could be the game they get six wins, or maybe even more, maybe seven if things go well in uh, Madison this weekend. Um, and people were also speculating on the uh, the Rutgers Rant podcast. Is this uh, is this setting up, you know, potentially the second biggest game in Rutgers history if? If Rutgers is able to to win the next three games, seven and seven and one Rutgers no, it's, versus it's undefeated huge. Ohio State. Oh, if they oh, if they pull that one off, yeah, yeah, yeah. So if, yes. if they okay, win okay. Wisconsin, they win Michigan State, they win Indiana, they'll be at seven and one versus uh, Maryland. Versus Ohio team. State, who's or, uh, yeah, Ohio, Ohio, State. Ohio State, who's likely undefeated on November fourth. Rutgers gets a bye for Ohio State too, which is huge. Yeah, because that can, you can really build that momentum. You can. Mm -hmm. Like if you are in that situation, Greg Schiano is going to pull out all the stops in terms of marketing, in terms of trying to get kids on campus, in terms of hyping up that ticket yeah. for for November fourth. Uh, so this is another thing. If you don't have a ticket yet for that game, probably should make a plan to get those. Yeah. Which, if you don't have a ticket for that game, hear me out. Plug uh, in. Um, Anyway, if you don't have a ticket for that game, check out SeatGeek, the number one provider for Rutgers Athletics resale tickets and ticket provider for the entire athletic department, I believe. Mm -hmm. um, if you don't have a SeatGeek account, use the promo code RUTGERSRIVALS, R-U-T-G-E-R-S-R-I-V-A-L-S. Wow, I got that great. Uh, Rutgers yep. Rivals, uh, all caps, and you get $20 off your first order. doesn't matter what ticket you're buying. If you're buying Rutgers tickets, if you're buying Jets Giants, if you're buying Taylor Swift tickets, $20 off. Now I'm going to go put Taylor Swift as a hashtag in this video and the views are going to go. <laughs> um, but no, in seriousness, uh, use it. If you don't have a SeatGeek account, make one $20 off immediately. If you do have a SeatGeek account, use one of your burner emails. I know everyone has a burner email at this point. I have like four just for sign up for random stuff that I don't want to deal with every day. Um, otherwise, my email box would be flooded. So yeah, check it out. Check out SeatGeek. Um, going back to the Rutgers, Ohio State thing pulling out all the marketing stops. Now I might be uh, showing my age a little bit here, 
um, which is kind of ironic considering I'm not old. Um, Shianoville, bring it back. Mm. For that game, if you're seven and one versus an undefeated Ohio State team, Shianoville, remember you used to hang hand out the pizzas. Oh, that's right. When you would uh, for student the tickets, kids waiting for tickets. Yeah. yeah, bring that back. Let's let's make that a thing. Make them well, watch that line that usually goes outside the rack. Jersey Mike's pull that outside of SHI, and he's just <laughs> Shiano's handing out Pizza Hut. Mind you, I think the, pro- I think the problem now is everything's so everything's digital. Like, like going, oh, you're right. getting tickets yeah. is just through some online portal rather than having True. to actually go to the, the box office uh, to get tickets. But oh, I'm sure they'll hype up something at the yard. It might even be a, I know they don't really do pep rallies per se, which I always thought was kind of weird. I thought they should do that more often, but I guess it's yeah well, lack of winning. No offense to Chris Ash, but no, fuck that guy. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so I mean, maybe do a pep rally at the yard, hand out a couple stuff, throw out some. Remember, he handed out flip flops one year. It was just throwing out like Adidas flip flops and stuff. Or maybe it was a Pike. So this this could be leading into uh, a cross promotional thing with the basketball program because basketball True. opens the season on November six, which is that Monday. Okay. So what you could see is having some kind of basketball pep rally on that Friday or that Saturday, mm-hmm. uh, you know, with a heavy promotional element of that going to the Ohio State game the following day. Yeah, that's uh, there's a lot of a lot of cool things you could do there. Um, maybe college game day, college game day, maybe. Maybe, uh, but I I am we are getting quite ahead of ourselves here. Rutgers yes. has a big game tomorrow. <laughs> um, but even, even if they're six and two, Still that's going to be a big environment. That's going to be a huge environment. So anyway, uh, do you have anything else you wanted to, to hit on before we head out? No. Um, one thing I can think of if, if you don't follow us on social media and follow me on social media, it's been a fun week. So, uh, Definitely follow me at Rivals Richie. Uh, I'm not going to dive too much into it, but there's some some clowns it out there. It has certainly been a week. Um, yeah. <laughs> certainly been a week. I don't want to yeah. give any airtime to. Uh, no, absolutely not. A bit you more can, than we already have, but yeah, I'm not even going to curse at him. It'd be nice. <laughs> <laughs> um, but for those of you who are following us uh, on social media, if you're not following us on whatever your favorite podcasting app is, or on the YouTube channel uh i don't know what you're waiting for at this point uh for everybody who is though we thank you and your our favorite fans out there um i also want to thank anybody who has rated and reviewed the podcast if you haven't please do it it really helps the algorithm to get us uh, up higher in the rankings and also to get it out in front of more Rutgers fans uh just is a huge help it's the smallest thing you can do to, to help the show what were you gonna say rich uh, I know last pod we didn't do it. I don't think the pod before we did it, and they liked it. So I need your picks before we sign off. Just through this, Ben. All right. So just give, just give me something. Give me some locks. I kind of some... got my. I'm kind of glad we didn't do them last week because I got my cheeks beat in a bit. Um, that doesn't count. You didn't, you didn't post it, so it doesn't count. <laughs> didn't post it, so I'm gonna ride again with the Washington State Cougars. Um, they are undefeated. They have one of the best quarterbacks in the country. They're kind of getting treated like Rutgers a bit in the sense that mm-hmm. everyone just thinks of Washington State and kind of downplays them. They arguably have the best offense in the country. Cam Ward is an absolute dog. Um, they're playing at UCLA this weekend. UCLA is one of the worst home environments in the country. If you, yeah. They can't Big draw ten. a crowd. <laughs> they can't draw a crowd to save their lives. So. I think Washington State goes down there and wins outright. I think they're they're a three point dog. I want to say right around a three point dog. Mm-hmm. Um, another game, another team I really like this weekend is Texas in the Red River rivalry. I think Ohio or not Ohio, Oklahoma is a bit un- overrated. Um, they haven't really played anybody either. I know that this matchup indicator on ESPN is showing uh, Oklahoma actually being favored. But if you look at what Texas has done this year, they have the most impressive resume of any team in terms of what they've actually done. They've mm-hmm. scored over 30 points in every single game. They've beaten every opponent by at least two scores. And they have arguably the most impressive win in the country this year, going down to Tuscaloosa and Alabama uh, and winning by two scores. Um, okay. Which I don't know when the last time that's happened under Nick Saban, some team coming in, especially out of conference. I don't think it's happened out of conference. The last team that's beaten 
Alabama in Alabama by two scores. I hmm. I don't know. Interesting. Um, so I like Texas there. I think Texas is a six and a half point favorite. I'd take six, Texas with the points. Those are my two games. I got Rutgers at uh, plus fourteen as well. So if you can get some get a plus fourteen out there, I would still take that. I think that line should be more at like 10, 10 and a half. Yeah. If I'm being honest. Agreed. So I still think it's a good bet, even when it's at 13, 13 and a half. <clears throat> so those are my three bets. Rutgers with the spread, Texas with the spread, and Washington State money line. Perfect. Uh, I got to throw one out there on my own. Maryland plus 20 versus Ohio State. Seems like a lot of points for a Maryland team that's been pretty damn good this year. I think Tally is probably Big Ten Offensive Player of the Year at this point so far. Mm -hmm. 13 touchdowns, three interceptions. I think he has, uh, I forget the exact yardage, but he's leading the Big Ten by a significant gap in yardage, passing yards. Uh, he's thrown for 280-plus in three games out of the, three out of the first five games this season. I just think this isn't a great Ohio State team. I know they put up, they beat Notre Dame. Yes, huge win. But other than that, they haven't done really much of anything. And I don't even know if they should have won that game because Notre Dame just beat themselves by Notre Dame being stupid. For sure. Yeah, it was... So. Marcus Freeman, I don't think there's been a coach who's blown a game worse than he did mm -hmm. against Notre Dame between the mismanagement of the clock when they had the ball so with like two minutes and 40 seconds left and Ohio State had two timeouts mm -hmm. um, from having 10 men on the field for the last two plays of the game. That's, how do you do that? <laughs> and he knew that too. You don't admit that after the no. press, game, press okay. conference. You, you take that to your grave or you take that to the coaches, to coaches meeting. You don't admit that. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Roughly. I agree. They they probably should have lost that game, but it's a testament to them. They won against the top ten team on the road. More power to them. Um, but I do right. think that this is a down Ohio State team compared to what they've been the last decade, probably. Yeah, that's why I think twenty points is nuts. But if it's, you, it's if a lot you of wanna, points, you, yep. I wouldn't even be shocked if they pulled it off too. Like I'd sprinkle a tiny bit on Maryland money line just to see what happens. But I wouldn't go too too crazy with that one. But yeah, I, I think that's a pretty good uh, matchup this week and. I think it's on at the same time, actually, so I don't think many people will be watching it on our podcast. Yeah, probably not. Another thing we're trying to set up, um, we're trying to set up a, a a live stream for the game. I know a lot of you don't have Peacock. The game is on Peacock. Richie is in talks cock. with the cock. <laughs> Richie is in talks with uh, somebody who works with a streaming service to mm -hmm. find a way to get this streamed and it'll show our faces in the bottom and we'll have live commentary. It'll kind of be like a Manning cast. We'll see if we can get that to work. If not, uh, we will have, we will have the live podcast tomorrow, probably around three thirty, four o'clock. Yeah. So maybe it'll be in jubilation. Maybe it'll be a, uh, you know, a bit of a downer like Michigan game, but Mm -hmm. We will be live tomorrow uh, at four o'clock ish, and ish. maybe we'll be live at noon for the whole game. We'll see how things go. Yeah. Uh, but for me and Richie, oh, if you want, we'll keep you updated on the boards, and we'll post it on Twitter if we're going to be doing that live stream. Yes. But you'll know first on the boards for sure. But for me and Rich, this has been another edition of the Night Report podcast. Signing off. <laughs>